Good morning guys, good afternoon, good evening, depending on which part of the world that you are watching from. Welcome to Keep Calm, a Nesson YouTube channel with me, Cindy. So guys, um, before we enter into the lesson, I just want to say so sorry uh, for not posting for quite some time. Uh, most of you have been asking. Uh, when are you going to post? When are you going to post? Uh, and finally, we are here. We are able to share with you uh, what we are learning. So, hopefully, for those that are preparing for your exams this month, hope you will be able to learn one or two things that can be helpful in your exam. So, in today's lesson, we are going to look at management of a patient in a sickle crisis. Now, uh, mostly we are used to know that um, because they will usually un is under pediatrics, and usually when it comes into, a, into the exam, it's under pediatrics, yes. But uh, for our own practice, it is very important to know how to uh, handle a sickle cell crisis adult patient because um, it's the same crisis, just that it's uh, in adults at uh, this point. Now, uh, let's continue with our lesson. So, as usual, how to draw uh, a missing care plan. If you are preparing for your exam, it is very much important that by, by at this time, you know how you have to draw your missing care plan. But if you don't know, this is why this tool is here and this video and lesson is here to help you revise and prepare adequately for your exams. Now, we do start uh, our nursing care plan as this. We draw it like this. Now, note that uh, in this one, I have combined date and time of the plan. So, you can also divide them you can write them separately you can start with date and time then you move on to other columns now for this one i've combined them so in your exams you have to be very very uh, particular you have to be very very specific so if you are not comfortable with combining them of course you can separate them so our first problem that our patient with in a sickle cell crisis will present with is pain so, as usual, when you write your nursing problem, the next column should be the nursing diagnosis, where you have to explain uh, why the patient is presenting with that problem. Then in the next one is your objective or your goal or your aim of the interventions that you want to to implement, then the next column is the nursing intervention. Then the next column is the national. The, this is the column where you explain why you are doing uh, the interventions that you are implementing. Then in the last one, uh, it is uh, the expected outcome or evaluation. So you can either write expected outcome or evaluation, it's one and the same thing. So now let's go deep into the lesson. So we said that the patient will present with pain. So a patient in a sickle cell crisis will usually have pain. So this pain is due to the occlusion of cell of small blood vessels causing ischemia and infection leading to severe pain, which uh, will be manifested uh, in the legs, in the feet, in the joints, or in the abdomen. So the pain can be located anywhere in the body. So this pain will be exerted by a child or the patient will be crying a lot. And usually they will be able to verbalize to say, I'm having pain, my legs are burning, my joints are pain. So when it comes to our goal, our goal is to make sure that we relieve pain and promote comfort 
uh, within 30 minutes of admission. So if this patient is just admitted is in ER, um, we are going to write it like this, or if, if they are in the ward, we have to write accordingly, okay? So when it comes to the interventions, the first intervention that we are going to do is that we are going to assess the level of pain using the scale of 1 to 10. So now, why are we assessing? So we want to ascertain the type of intervention needed by the patient because we want to know how, um, how we want to help this patient. So we are going to use the scale of 1 to 10 to ascertain the type of intervention that the patient wants, needs, not want, needs. Okay, so uh, by the end of our interventions, our expected outcome is that we want our patients to be free from pain, which will be evidenced by patient sleeping comfortably or no longer crying and the patient should be able to say if they are adults or if they are bigger children they should be able to say that uh, the pain has gone i'm no longer feeling pain after the intervention so after we assess the patient's level of pain we are going to administer the prescribed painkillers such as morphine or paracetamol or pethidine and notice that these medications that you are going to uh, administer are according to the level of pain that we found when we were assessing the patient. Now, pethidine and morphine are very strong um, painkillers. So, this we are going to give if the patient has told us that they are in severe pain so we should be when assessing we should be able to ask the patient from the level of one to ten how can you scale your pain so if the patient says um 10 over 10 or 9 over 10 we are going to know that this patient is in severe pain and we have to administer morphine or pethidine or the medication according to what the doctor has ordered then we should be able our rationale is that we want to relieve the patient from this pain yes so uh, uh, our uh, evaluation or expected outcome is that we want to relieve the patient from pain so the next intervention is that we want we will observe for the patient will be observed closely how they are responding to the drugs so observe so closely observe patient's response to drugs and report uh, to the medical doctor so after you assess the patient you notice the level of pain that they are in you administer the prescribed uh, painkillers such as morphine or paracetamol or according to what the doctor has ordered. Then you observe patient's response to this drug. So you should be able to notice after administering the drug if the patient is responding to the drugs or not. Because sometimes you can administer this drug and then the patient is still in pain so we should be able to communicate to the doctors that uh, after uh, administering this drug the patient is still in pain so the doctor will be able to adjust the drugs accordingly so these are the three points that are under these interventions so remember we assess the level of pain we administer the prescribed painkillers then we observe patients um response to these painkillers then the next intervention is that we want we position the patient carefully and support painful areas with pillows so why are we doing that we want to release the patient from pain on the painful points 
So we have to position the patient carefully and support painful areas with periods to relieve the patient from pain on the painful point. So our evaluations still remain the same. So the other point on intervention is that we can apply local heat or massage the areas so that we relieve the patient from pain. Then also put the patient on bed rest during the crisis. This is because the patient will be ill and we want to avoid the condition from worsening. So the patient has to be on a bed rest. Then last but not the least, we are going to provide diversion therapy such as the television viewing. So if they are children, we can also provide toys uh, for them to be playing with. So why are we doing this? We want to distract the child from thinking about pain. So we want the patients not to be thinking about pain. So if they are children, uh, we will give them toys, uh, we will play with them so that we divert their minds from thinking about the pain. So these are the points under pain or altered comfort. Altered comfort or pain. So note that in these columns, this is the continuation of these other two columns. So the next problem is that the patient will present with the difficulties in breathing or dyspnea. So the uh, next problem we've discovered that it is difficulties in breathing. So under the nursing diagnosis, this patient is having difficulties in breathing due to cardiopulmonal involvement and the low hemoglobin levels or low HB. So we know that in sickle cell, usually our patients will have a low hemoglobin. So this will also contribute to them having difficulties in breathing. And this will be evidenced by patient having labored breathing, hypoxia, and the oxygen saturation levels are going to be low. So this is our nursing diagnosis. So our goal then is that we want to promote tissue perfusion and relieve the patient from labor and difficulties in breathing within 30 minutes of admission. So not that if it's in the ER, the patient has just come, we're supposed to state that. Or if it's in the ward, they are supposed to state that as well. So our intervention is that, uh, that we are going to quickly assess the ABC, which is the airway breathing and the circulation, and we want to quickly check the patient's oxygen saturation levels using a pulse oximeter. So make sure that you, you do that, you assess so that, and why are we doing that? Why are we doing our intervention? So our rationale then comes in to say, we want to ascertain the level, the oxygen level in the patient's body. So imagine the patient has come, and if we're not as if we do not assess them quickly, we may miss out the importance of um, of assessing them, of uh, checking their oxygen levels. We can we can miss out. We can find that. Um, maybe the patient's oxygen levels are too low because they have a low hemoglobin because of their condition. So what we're supposed to do is that when the patient comes in, quickly assess how they are breathing, the airway, make sure that it's clear and monitor the oxygen saturation. Now, when we monitor the oxygen saturation, we want to ascertain the level of oxygen in the blood. And our expected outcome or our evaluation is that we want the patient the patient's condition the patient's oxygen levels will be normalized and will be relieved from difficulties in breathing which will be evidenced by patients having um, oxygen saturation of 93 percent to 100 percent so this is the first uh, interventions that we are going to do. Secondly, after we are 
monitor the oxygen saturation and we notice that the patient's SpO2's oxygen levels are low, we are going to administer oxygen. So administer oxygen therapy as prescribed via, a, via the nozzle plume or the mask. So I'm going to use a mask or the nozzle plume to administer oxygen. So why are we administer, administering oxygen if because we want to promote tissue perfusion? So the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to encourage the patient to be uh, having to be having deep breathing exercises and to be coughing. So if the patient is conscious, we are going to encourage them to be having deep breathing and deep coughing exercises. And why are we doing that? We want to promote full lung expansion. Then the next uh, intervention that you are going to do is we are going to uh, continue to monitor the respiration rate and the SpO2 we are going to be monitoring it hourly in the acute phase. So the, if the patient is in acute phase where they have just come, they are in the crisis, we are going to be monitoring them hourly. So why are we doing this? Our rationale is that we want to detect any deviation from normal. And we also want to notice after doing these interventions, is the patient being relieved from difficulties in breathing or uh, we have to do some other uh, interventions. Then the other um, intervention is that we are also going to administer blood. So if the patient's hemoglobin levels are low, we are going to administer blood. And this, why are we going to do that? We want to increase the hemoglobin levels. And when, because when we increase the hemoglobin level, we are also going to help the patient to breathe properly. And as we are monitor, as we are administering the blood as a nurse, we have to make sure that we are monitoring the patient closely during the procedure. And why are we doing that? It is because we want to not or to detect any blood reactions that the patient can have. And when we notice any uh, of the reactions, we have to immediately stop the blood and inform the medical doctor. So those are the interventions that we are supposed to do under difficulties in breathing. So another problem that a patient in a sickle cell crisis can present with is fever. So our nursing problem is that the patient may have fever and our nursing diagnosis is that the patient may have high temperatures due to the inflammatory reaction caused by tissue infection and if there is infection. So if the patient is also has an infection in the body, they will have the fever. And this will be evidenced by a patient uh, having the temperature of 38 to 40 degrees Celsius. So our goal then will be we want to reduce this fever within 30 minutes and then we also want to prevent fever complications such as these uh, seizures or convulsions, especially in children. We want to uh, reduce the fever as fast as possible so that say, the patient does not uh, start to convulse. So in our nursing interventions, we are going to, the first thing that we are going to do is what we are going to check the temperature of the patient. So we are going to check the temperature hourly in the acute phase. And why are we doing that? We want to detect any deviation from normal which is fever, and then to note if the fever is reducing after the intervention. And then during in our evaluation or the expected outcome is that our patient's body temperature will be reduced and the patient will be free from complications, fever complications. 
So the next interventions that we are going to do is that we are going to expose the patient by removing extra clothing and linen if it present. So if we notice that the patient has got fever, we have to reduce uh, to expose the patient by removing extra linen and clothing if present. And why are we doing so? It is because we want to uh, promote heat loss, this reduce fever. The next, we are going to tepidispond the patient with lukewarm water. And why are we doing so? We want to cool the patient's body. Then also, we are going to open nearby windows with caution. So in this case, we are going to open windows with caution because we want to prevent a cold breeze entering the room which can worsen the patient because it can cause hypothermia which can take back the patient into the crisis which we are avoiding or which we are managing so we have to open the nearby windows with caution if it's very cold we will do it with caution so that we don't worsen the patient's condition so why are we opening windows? We want to allow cool air to enter in the room. Then also we are going to administer the prescribed antipyretic such as paracetamol. Why are we doing so? We want to reduce uh, fever. And also lastly, we are going to administer the prescribed antibiotics. So this is in situations where the patient has got an infection so when we treat as that infection it means the patient will no longer have fever so those are the points under fever so the third problem that our patient is going to have is anxiety so our nursing diagnosis is that uh, the patient will have uh, will be anxious so this anxiety will be related to lack of knowledge about the disease and the prognosis. So especially if this is a baby, this is a child that has been newly diagnosed. The parents do not know, do not have knowledge about sickle or they are going to be anxious because they do not know how the condition comes about and what to do when the patient is in a crisis. So they are going to be anxious and this will be evidenced by the parents asking a lot of questions or if it's an older child, they will be able to ask a lot of questions and they will, they will, they will even look anxious. So our goal or our aim or our objective as a nurse is that we want to help the patients and the parents to be free from and from being anxious so we also want to make sure that the patients are educated more about the disease or the condition so that they understand and by so doing they are going to be free from anxious from they are going to be calm so our interventions are as follows we are going to explain so explain to the patient and the parents how the condition comes about together with what is happening to the patient so why are we doing that we want to promote understanding then the second point is that we are going to explain the reason for special care such as oxygen and blood transfusion so why are we doing so we want to explain so when we do that we want to allay anxiety that's under our rationale then also third point is that we want we have to involve the parents in the child's care so if it's the child we are going to involve the parents in the child's care why are we doing that we want to prevent social isolation so if it is an adult, we are going to involve significant others such as the husband, the friends uh, in their care so that we prevent uh, social isolation. So then also we are going to encourage the parents or the patient, him or herself, to talk about their concerns and as a nurse, we have to respond to them 
we scam means in, in simple terms so that we promote understanding and allay anxiety. And our evaluation or expected outcome is that the patient or the parents uh, anxious will be reduced as evidenced by them being calm and not asking a lot of questions. So we can even evaluate if they've understood by asking them questions. So they should be able to answer our questions. Yes. So the, uh, the other point is that we should also explain every procedure before doing a procedure on the patient. So explain every procedure such as commencement of oxygen or blood transfusion. So we have to explain explain to them in simple terms so that they understand and when they understand they are going to cooperate and that will make our work easy so the final problem that uh, we have on our nursing care plan is that our patients are high are highly substitute they are at high risk of for having infections. So our nursing diagnosis is that our patients are at high risk of acquiring diseases or infections due to the low immunity that they have. So our goal or objective is that we want to treat the patient if they have any infection we are going to treat it, then we are going to prevent nosocomial infections during or throughout hospitalization. hospitalization. Please note out um, there's a typing error. Yeah. So we want to prevent nosocomial infections throughout hospitalization. So our nursing interventions are as follows. We are going to admit the patients in a clean and well-ventilated room. Why are we doing so? To prevent bacterial colonization or infection under our ration health. So the second point is that we are going to nurse the patient in vest isolation to prevent the patient from acquiring other infections. So we are going to nurse these patients away from patients with infectious conditions that can easily infect them. Then also we are going to administer prescribed antibiotics to combat any infections that they have or to treat any infections that the patients may have. And then we are going to monitor the vital signs hourly which may show that the patient has an infection or not. So if the, we find that they have got fever, for example, it will show that he, they may have an infection and we have to treat it accordingly. Then also we have to administer uh, prophylactic drugs such as the paramethamine or delta frim. Like if you are if the patient or you are missing this patient in an endemic area or in an area where there are a lot of uh, malaria cases, we are going to give them Delta Prim. Like for us in Zambia, we give Delta Prim to prevent them from having malaria. Then also hydroxyurea is also given to to prevent. Uh, or to reduce the occurrences of um, of of the crisis. So this is a simple and easy to learn and to master nursing care plan for a patient in a sickle cell crisis. I hope that you learn and you you revise. Um, and prepare well for your exams and please for all your comments write down your comments and uh, anything that you want to learn please let me know in the comments section and if I left out anything which is very important uh, under this topic please 
also put in your comments. Remember to subscribe to this channel to encourage me if you are really enjoying uh, these lessons. Remember to subscribe and share with your friends. Thank you so much for um, learning with me. Uh, may you have a blessed day. Thank you.